We begin our report with 12 New Yorkers, a jury of Donald Trump's peers who will do something that makes them peerless in history. Decide whether or not a former president of the United States is guilty of committing a crime. It was a bit of an up and down day in court Thursday. The day started with seven jurors. Two were then dismissed, one because he apparently lied about his criminal history, another because she said she feared her identity would be made public. There was barely enough time, though, for speculation about how hard it would be to field a full jury before a full jury was picked with one alternate. The judge said opening arguments could start Monday. Trump spoke after court, flipping through pages of what he claimed were stories by, quote, legal experts, saying the case against him was, quote, ridiculous. As a reminder, Trump is accused of falsifying business records to cover up payments to his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who paid off adult film actress Stormy Daniels during the 2016 election in order to silence her and her story of an alleged affair with Trump. CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa joins me now. Bob, as I mentioned, one juror asked to be dismissed over fear her identity would get out. How did that change the process once that happened? It was a day of pinballing decisions on this jury, John. You had the day begin with seven, then it went down to five. Uh, because of one nurse said she was just felt her identity could be exposed already. Fen friends and family were pushing things to her on her phone via text message and, and social media. You had someone else who was alleged to have ripped down conservative posters years ago and have been arrested for that. Someone with the same name as someone arrested was, for that was on the jury. So you went from seven to five, but then quickly Judge Juan Mershon here in this New York criminal case decided to move swiftly, and he got the jury done, working with the prosecution and the defense team. It was a complicated process, but it's so evident here at the end of the day that this judge wants to begin opening statements by Monday. Now, prosecutors have argued that the former president has violated his gag order multiple times. There's going to be a hearing on that next week. What can you tell us about what uh, Trump is accused of saying to violate that order? It's a, a bit of a complicated question right now for the Trump legal team because they know he has a gag order. He's not allowed to talk about jurors because that could intimidate the jurors. He is allowed to talk about the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg. He is allowed to talk about the judge, in this case, Juan Mershon. But the, the question really is about social media. What can he do on true social? Is he allowed to repost or retweet or whatever you want to call it, posts that maybe allude to jurors or allude to witnesses? Trump, of course, has raged about the key witness in this case, Michael Cohen, his former fixer, many times. And the judge is going to try to deliberate with the prosecution and the Trump legal team what is the scope of what he can say. Of course, Trump says he can say almost anything he wants because he's a candidate running for federal office. With a jury seated, opening arguments could start Monday. Is that right? Remind us of, of who some of the people we could hear from. You, you mentioned Michael Cohen. What about some others who we might hear from who are uh, uh, important names throughout this trial? You're going to hear from Hope Hicks, uh, the former Trump communications advisor, someone you and I have worked with over the years when she did work for Trump. She helped facilitate interviews with different journalists. And she was also present at the creation of this alleged criminal scheme. Back in 2016, after Access Hollywood breaks as a story and scandal for Trump, as the Stormy Daniels issue percolates behind the scenes for the Trump campaign, she was a witness to some of those behind-the-scenes conversations about Michael Cohen and Trump and how they were maybe going to handle this situation from erupting as yet another scandal for Trump just before the election. We'll hear from people who were involved in the, uh, this whole idea of killing stories, not just Stormy Daniel, but others. So David Pecker. Uh, the former publisher of the National Enquirer, likely to be called as a witness, among so many others who were part of that Trump orbit back in 2016. Robert Costa in Lower Manhattan at the courthouse for us. Thank you so much, Bob.